Hi, everyone, and welcome. I am lucky to have Trish Brunel with me today, uh, a, a fellow pelvic health physio who's going to talk with me about pessaries. Because even though I see so many women with pessaries or that I think are great candidates to have pessaries, I am not part of the fitting process, which leaves me unable to answer some of your questions about that. And so I, it was suggested to me to reach out to Trish because I heard that she not only knew her stuff, but that she'd be too nice to turn me down. <laughs> so Trish, thank you so much for being here. Um, I understand that you're in Barrie, so over in, in Ontario, and that you, you have your own practice, that yes. you yourself um, fit women with pessaries. I think, I believe some of the other practitioners in your clinic do as well, yes. and that you're also part of the process in helping educate other pelvic health physios and nurses, I believe, to, to fit pessaries as well. So yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself. So I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, yes, I have a clinic in Barrie, Ontario, just north of Toronto. And um, I was, the last two years, I've also been assisting on the pessary fitting course. Uh, this year we had mostly physios. We had two nurses, I think, and one midwife from the US, which was kind of fun, cool. different perspective. And um, the nice thing about being on the pessary fitting course is when I don't know if everybody knows this, but when physios learn these things, we work on each other. So we have a good intimate understanding of how they feel, how they work or don't work. Um, so that's really nice to be able to do. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. And okay. I was telling Trish that my biggest motivation for doing this was not only for my own learning, but then also too, to be able to have this video live on YouTube and act as a resource for my clients and anyone else that wants to know a little bit more about pessary. So Thanks, Trish, for, for doing this. And one other quick thing before we dive in, I just wanted to say that obviously you can't have a conversation about pessaries without talking about prolapse, but that's not what this interview is about. And so I've gone ahead and created a resource that will also live on YouTube that, that talks in detail about pessaries, or sorry, not pessaries, but prolapse, and um, the different variations of prolapse symptoms, um, why it's caused other treatment options. So that in itself will live on YouTube and we don't need to talk about that in this interview. So that will live there. I want to just save this conversation for pessaries. And I thought that we would literally just dive in here, Trish. And um, please feel free to kind of talk however you feel it flows. But I have some questions and I thought I would just lead off with you just saying a little bit about in what situations or in what clients you find that pessaries are the best option. Sure, that's great. I think uh, back in the day, we used to think pessaries were most uh, useful in the older population. And thankfully, that's changing. Um, I think that when a woman has a few little kids running around or is reaching that middle part of her life where she still really wants to be active and maybe run or try some new things, pessaries are a really good option to help support prolapse through all phases of life. Uh, so I think we've been a little short-sighted over the years in terms of who we use them for. Uh, I really do recommend to anybody who is feeling symptoms of heaviness, um, maybe a change in their flow, their urine flow as they are avoiding, all of those are good reasons to have a pessary. Um, and I will fit women with a grade one if they're aware of their pessary, their, sorry, their prolapse, if they're aware of their prolapse, then I'm happy to fit them with a a pessary almost as a prevention um, and if they have a bigger prolapse uh, grade two to four certainly they can be really helpful um, so there isn't anybody that I won't fit with a pessary if they can feel the the symptoms of prolapse I think that that's kind of it's a good it's kind of a good leading question because what I find and I think maybe in Ontario you guys are a little bit farther ahead of us as, as physios because there's very few physios in in though there's none in my community for sure in right. Kelowna. and so I see a lot of women that I think would be great candidates but after I refer them they're looking at a several month wait just to get yeah. into the gynecologist there's a, not even any nurses that I am aware of in town that fit them so it's just not being used in our community as well mm -hmm. and so um, I think it's great because from what I understand they would probably get in a lot quicker maybe to see a physio and be able to use that as an option in the postpartum period 
Yeah, for sure. So it's right now at our clinic, it's probably with the other therapists, it's probably a three week wait with me, it's probably a four to a five week wait, but still significantly less. Um, and yeah, if, I think the earlier we can get somebody fit in the postpartum period once healing has occurred, um, then the better off we can be. And I, I think we miss some opportunities with postpartum women to hopefully have um, tissues shorten adaptively in a good position with their organs lifted as opposed to having them still sort of uh, under gravity and, and not be healing in a good position. Exactly. So that makes me kind of think, so then Trish, do you usually recommend like, so then if it was the postpartum period, do you usually recommend they can come in as early as about eight weeks after or, and start the process or what do you? I think probably the earliest I fit a postpartum woman has been around 10 weeks. Um, and that really does depend. Some people are pretty healed at four weeks. I still think that's early for a fitting, but um, eight to 12 probably would be average, I would think. Okay. And so the process there um, with if when they go through a physio, is do they still need a doctor's referral? Yeah. So they need a doctor. And um, it might be different in different provinces, but certainly in Ontario, they need a doctor's. We don't need a referral, but we need a prescription because pessaries are a class two medical device. So I can do the fitting because I'm allowed to insert things or my hands into a vagina, yeah. uh, but I can't, I can't let her go home with the pessary. So I need a, a, a prescription and a directive letter that I send out to the doctor ahead of the appointment. And once I get all the paperwork back, uh, I'll do the fitting. On occasion, I've done the fitting ahead of time and then got the paperwork afterwards so I can give her the pessary. Um, but I do find a lot of my people I fit are coming from a distance, so sometimes driving two hours, and so I'd rather be able to get it all done in one day. Right. Yeah. So is there any situation, so I know, because um, I always describe to women, think of the pessary almost like a knee brace <laughs> for your vagina, and that, yes, yeah. yeah, sometimes it's a temporary thing that you might feel like you need to use, like you said, to kind of accommodate tissue healing and help support at that time. Obviously, estrogen levels can be a little bit lower postpartum. Can you yes. speak to, so do you automatically recommend that they go see someone to talk to them about hormone replacement with the pessary or how do you manage that? Because obviously that's not something that we can prescribe. Right. I, I will talk about it in a general sense saying that postpartum estrogen levels are often quite a bit lower. Um, in the letter that I sent to the doctor initially, it does say, please assess your patient vaginally, do a, a gynecological exam, and assess the need for uh, some local hormone replacement, uh, estrogen, and um, or just a vaginal moisturizer. Yeah. So I leave that up to the doctor, but it is in the original letter. And uh, I would say about half of my women will get some form okay. of, of local estrogen. Okay. Great. And then um, tell us um, a little bit about the cost associated to the client. Sure. Yeah. So that's the one drawback I would say in Ontario, again, probably in most of Canada, they would have to pay for the fitting time that we spend. Um, and so I take about 75 minutes at an appointment. I charge $125 for that. Our usual one hour visit is 125. So I'm taking an extra 15 minutes because I feel I need it to really, excuse me do a good job um, and make sure that she's got a really good fitting. And so if she saw a gynecologist, of course, that part would be free. And then I charge a little bit less for the pessary than most gynees in my area. Uh, so we charge $70 and they'll last a, a year for sure, but sometimes two years. Okay. So it's, it's relatively uh, cheap. And most plans in Ontario we've been finding cover the pessary under the braces section of the plan oh, because okay. really that's what it is it's a it's a brace right, exactly um, yeah so okay. do you have some with you trish to be able to i do to show kind of the most common one i know there's lots of different ones but maybe you know show for, i would love to see like first of all just show the full kit if you if that's oh able, okay no. kids, it's okay if you can't the way over there yeah that's okay i've got four sitting here so this one is a ring with support and so you can get the ring that's just the ring. I rarely use those, but this piece adds the support. And when you use it, it gets folded in half to get inserted, and then it opens up and your organs would sit on top. Right. Um, this is a bigger ring. I tend to show the big one because it hasn't been used a lot. Right. And um, 
sometimes that's a little bit terrifying, but most people will get uh, something that's two or three sizes smaller than this. And about 80% of women will end up with a ring. And they're nice because they can stand for a week at a time. Uh, you could potentially have sex with them in. So if this was the pessary and your partner, uh, a male partner would come in with their penis, it would just tip up out of the way. Um, although most people do take it out, it is possible to have sex with it in and it's easy to take in and out. Yeah. If somebody's a little bit more fit maybe, or their activities are a little higher level, or perhaps the prolapse that we were trying to control is sort of sneaking by the ring, we can use a cube. And cubes work on suction. So because of that, they need to come out every night uh, because this much tension on your, on your tissues could be damaging over time. Uh, so we get them a, get a little break. And um, I, if I have somebody who's going to CrossFit or doing a lot of running or sort of high level, maybe working at a, on a farm, um, I would tend to, to go towards this as long as um, the fit was right. Yeah. And we want to kind of use the least amount of support for yeah. the most benefit. Um, do they tend to, people tend to feel those bulkier ones? I know, sorry, I should let you talk about that donut first. They don't tend to feel those ones as much? No, you shouldn't feel them at all. So okay. just like putting a tampon in and you shouldn't feel that at all, it should feel like there's nothing there. And honestly, most of my women, if we get the right fit, I already know without palpating because it's on their face. Right. They literally have this look of relief, like they don't have to think about their vagina yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, and so it's really quite remarkable every time I find the right one. This little donut um, tends to be more for, I, I've never really, I've tried it in a few women, I've never sent one out the door. Mm -hmm. um, not popular amongst the physios fitting pessaries. Uh, they need help removing these. Okay. Uh, and I feel really strongly if I can teach a woman how to remove a pessary yourself, even ones that traditionally doctors would do once every three months, I'd rather help her get agency back over her own body. So I don't use a lot of these because they don't compress very well. So they're quite uncomfortable to get in and out. Okay. And then again, I grabbed a big one of these. This is a Gellhorn, usually stays in for three months, works on suction as well, mm -hmm. uh, and then has this little stem that you can get in a shorter length that helps it not tip when it's in, in the vagina. And, um, you cannot have sex with this and really the ring's the only one you can. Okay. I do have one or two young women with this in, but again, I teach them how to get it out because yeah. it's not rocket science. And so you just go in, break the suction, fold it, and then remove it. So that's four of, okay. of yeah. And so do you usually find then, Trish, that you start with the ring just because it works most of the time you start there. And then the, generally the only reason you would move to the others are if say it's falling out or if the comfort's not there or if it's not alleviating their symptoms? Yeah, I always start with the ring in the clinic anyway because it's easiest to get in and out and people are often a little apprehensive. So we put one in, they've got the sense that, you know, it's really not that uncomfortable. It's pretty good. Um, and if the ring, then when, when it's in, I check the fit. So I should be able to get my finger all the way around. I'll get them to get up jump around a little bit, maybe go for, do a few squats. If it's nice out, I'll get them to run up to the corner and come back. And if then I recheck it, if the pessary is still supporting the prolapse and um, nothing is, none of the tissue has come out below, mm -hmm. uh, then I'll have them go in void because if you can't pee with the pessary in, I can't send you home with it. Yeah. Um, and if she fails any of those tests, we'll just move on to a different, either a different size of ring or a different style. Okay. So that's how we do it, yeah. And Trish, when you were saying that you obviously, I know that you'd like most people to be able to take it in and out themselves in the event that they can't, or they don't want to, or they're not comfortable. Do you have them come in? I guess it depends. I know, but um, roughly how often would they come in and see you for that? We're trying, we're, we're working on that right now. We aren't really a pessary clinic in that sense. Um, Really, when the doctor signs off on the letter, they are committing to then maintaining the pessary after that with the patient. Um, but if I have, I really haven't had that scenario, I guess. Okay. Um, if I did have that scenario, I still think I would kind of encourage her to work on it. Yeah. Um, I do have somebody whose husband takes their pessary out. Um, and so he came in, we showed him how to do it, and off they went. So it doesn't have to be uh, the owner of the pessary right. necessarily. Um, but as I say, this one is three months. 
this one really should come out every week. So we couldn't really have somebody coming every week. And it, certainly this one has to come out every day. Yeah. I have had people call me at quarter to 11 uh, in a panic. And everybody gets my cell phone number because I feel like people need access for yeah. certain things. Yeah. Uh, saying they can't get their cube out. And I always say, you're welcome to drive out to my house. I'll take it out in yeah. my pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not coming to town. Yeah. Uh, and then I sort of talk them down and they, they can figure it out. Uh, oh, that's great. I think that's yeah. important. I think, it, like you said, I think it's very important. I think it it's less scary if they can get it out themselves. Yeah. And yeah, it just, it functions more like a knee brace if you can take it on and off, right? Exactly. Yeah. What about cleaning it, Trish? How do you, what do you tell people to do as far as cleaning it? Simple, simple. They uh, just regular soap and water and uh, no strong cleaners, no peroxide, no bleach, no boiling, just simple soap and water and leave it to air dry. Um, so if you've taken it out at night, do the cleaning, put it on the counter or tuck it in like a, like a mouth guard container that's got some holes and then uh, reinsert it. So you don't have to do any special cleaning really. Okay. And then how long are they supposed to replace them every year or something or? About every year to two years. I just get people when they do clean it, just to have a look for any cracks or anything like that. And if there's anything, I'm happy to look at them. People have certainly come in with them and had me check and I say, yes, that's good or no, it isn't. Um, you're not to wear them if you get an infection. So remove them, let the infection clear uh, before you start using them again. But uh, they're pretty simple in terms of care. Yeah. And one of my questions then, Trish, was which which types of prolapse do you find they're most used, but or most um, appropriately used? But I think you kind of answered that at the beginning, that essentially any time the vaginal walls need a little bit of support, you would try one, right? Is that, yeah? Yeah, yeah for sure. I think I'm always surprised. Yeah. Um, theoretically, the ring should be best for a cystocele, a bladder prolapse. Yeah. And... Um, but sometimes it doesn't work for that and we have to go to a cube or we have to go to something, you know, uh, more robust. Um, and sometimes I would see somebody with a rectus seal, let's say that's really close to the vaginal opening. And I think, oh, there's no way the ring will work. And it does. So it really is about her shape, uh, whether or not there are any muscle issues in terms of avulsion, her strength and muscle tone, and also how she uses herself. Um, so if she's a breath holder, if she's somebody who sort of forces down with a lot of things through her day, we might have to go up to different ones. So it's always, it is a, really, it is a trial and error. Um, and I try hard to get it right on the first time because I don't want anybody to have a drawer full of pessaries. Yeah. Um, but occasionally I probably have a handful of people who have a couple of pessaries before we've got the right one. Right. Yeah. Any instances, Trish, where you find that people can't have a bowel movement with them? Yeah. Yes. Can I tell a personal story? Of course. Yeah. So I uh, have a small grade one bladder prolapse. Doesn't really bother me. It's not symptomatic, but I decided I wanted to be able to still run and do things without thinking about it and, and sort of worrying because, um, you know, that's sometimes what physios do when we yeah, know you, things. You lost, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I have a, a ring that I use and uh, initially I just wore it for running, actually I still just wear it for running, but I couldn't, um, I couldn't have a bowel movement in, with it in mm -hmm. until about probably three or four weeks after I started to use it for running. And then all of a sudden my body kind of figured it out. And it, because it would yeah. fall out, Trish, like it would just actually migrate out? No, the pessary stayed in place. The you stool wouldn't go by it. Okay. Uh, but now my system sort of figured that out. The vast majority of my, of my people, if they're putting it in and taking it out every night and then putting it back in in the morning, they'll just try and have their bowel movement first thing in the morning. Um, and hopefully that takes care of the vast majority of it. But generally I find people, it might take a week or two till they yeah. their system they gets it and then they just kind of get it. Yeah. Good. And sometimes we have to adjust stool consistency a little bit yeah. um, with, you know, diet or, or uh, bulkers, you know? Yeah. But anyway. I would love to know, um, so far in, in your experience with this, how often do you find yourself sending them off to a gynecologist to manage? Instead manage of the pessary? Manage their pessary. 
Yeah. Well, the issue is that once the pessary has been fit, we like them to have a gynecological exam. I usually see them a week or two later just okay. to check. I do a speculum exam to make sure that the walls are good. There's no areas of abrasion or anything like that. They should go again in three months to a, to a gynecologist or their doctor, same exam, just a basic exam, and then every year after that. So, um, so with they the are three in and out, do you usually suggest them to have a look at it in and out? Usually they'll go remove the pessary. Really, it's a wall exam. We just want to make sure that the pessary isn't creating any tissue problems. Um, and so that's that's enough, generally speaking. I don't, gyne, gynecologists clearly are very, very uh, skilled and know all about pessaries and managing them. But I find a lot of GPs don't have a lot of experience with pessaries. Um, so I have to often encourage GPs if they're the ones managing, really what they're doing is they're just managing the tissue. Yeah. Um, if they feel like the pessary may not be working, the woman generally already knows that at that point that something has changed. Yeah. And so then I'll do that piece again, if that makes sense. That's great. I don't yeah, know. that's great. And I think that you're probably, I'm sure you're noticing and maybe your clients are noticing too that the nice thing maybe about seeing a physio is that you can tie in all, all the muscle training too, right? Because there's so much else that can accompany the pessary yeah. thing, right? And so that's the nice thing exactly. about having the physio guidance alongside. For sure. Right? Yeah. And For sure. I'm, I'm sure it's a big help to the gynecologist as well um, that you can help alleviate some of their caseload. I hope so. I hope so. I think it's nice because we can book the time we need as well. Yes. Um, whereas it's difficult. I know most gynees have a super busy practice um, and we're busy as well, but we've got that, that availability and that flexibility, I think, built in. So um, yeah, which is great for That's everybody. Good. Yeah. Um, I would love to, I feel like you've answered the main questions mm, that, that most people usually have, unless you think there's something that I've missed out that most, that most people are asking you about my, I had one, like, let's say again, we're not, we're not here yet in Kelowna where any of the physios are fitting pessaries, but I was actually just telling Trish that I signed up myself for um, a course similar to what, what, well, the same course that Trish helps to instruct to learn myself and, and be able to include this in my practice. But in the meantime, we don't have that. And I wonder what your suggestions are then to someone listening to this that wonders, like that experiences any vaginal heaviness or pressure and wonders if the, if a pessary would be the, the right fit for them and no matter what community they're in, what do you suggest that they do? Like what, because I find that a lot of, I often send my clients to their doctor and say, this would be something I would request, you know, very okay. gently request, but what do you usually suggest to, to people or what would be your advice? Well, I think uh, we've got the poison preza, which was on the shelves for a while, and I'm not sure if they're still on your shelves out in BC, but we don't really have them anymore. Oh. But if people are not sure, uh, we, they can order them online still. Um, so I'll get them to try those, and they are marketed for light bladder leakage as opposed to prolapse. But certainly, if you've found it changes your symptoms, you'd probably be a good candidate for a pessary. So that's a, a $15 try, which is pretty economical. Um, and there is the over-the-counter Uresta, which is a product you can get. It's $300 for the pessaries, and you get a set of three, and you can insert them yourselves and, and try those. Um, but also, I think if people have used a tampon for a period, let's say, and notice that they have less heaviness, that they leak less, that's a good indication that a pessary probably would be helpful. Um, so those are some things that people can kind of figure out on their own. And in terms of the physios listening, um, I think it's always a good idea to try and, and recommend a pessary if you can. If your wait list in your area with your gynees isn't too, too long, uh, it's certainly worth a try in pretty much anybody with prolapse where it's symptomatic, where they're feeling it all the time, where it's interfering with or starting to um, interfere with them doing their functional and, and fun activities. Mm -hmm. And if your life is changing, then it's certainly worth a try to, to, to get a pessary, um, however that happens. And as I say, I've had people drive, I think the furthest is three hours, yeah. um, which I, f I find super impressive because that's somebody who's really committed to their health yep. um, and their function, right? 
Um, and actually that particular person brought her physio with her. Oh, wow. And yeah, so that was great. And she saw that she sat in on the fitting. So at least she can then is, uh, advise her uh, patients, even if she never takes the fitting course, how they work, how they go in and out, and sort of take the mystery out of things. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I don't know if that answered the no, question. No, it, it definitely does. I, that's exactly what I was looking for is um, because I, I would say that prolapse is the scariest symptom for, for women in general. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of them um, feel that this is just their life and that this is, this is how they need to live. And I think the message still is usually that um, only old women use pessaries. So I really appreciate you kind of explaining. I think just, just like anyone after any type of knee surgery would expect that they have you know some time or, or need a bit of support maybe moving forward for the rest of their life that's okay if it if it helps you do the things that you love or helps progression then I, I don't yeah I'm, I'm glad that you were able to kind of speak to that yeah I think there are still a lot of questions we need to answer with respect to pessaries um, there is research out there but um, even in the clinic, we have so many questions and we've had a little meeting about what we would like to figure out. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to put together maybe our first little study. Um, but I did have two really interesting uh, postpartum women who I'd seen after their, I saw them between baby one and two, both of them. And then after the second baby, I said, let's try a pessary for both of them. They both had a grade two bladder and rectal uh, rectocele. Um, and so we fit them both with rings, actually. I saw them a, throughout that year, we did some things, and uh, then they sort of dropped off because they were doing well. But at the end of the year with the pessary, one of them came back and said, you know, I don't know if I need this anymore. Mm -hmm. So she came in without it. She hadn't had it in for two weeks. And when I examined her, she barely had a grade one prolapse yeah. left, even having her do a whole bunch of sort of higher level heavy tasks. Yeah. So we decided she would only wear it to go to the gym. And maybe if she was helping a friend move or, you know, some heavy day that she had. And so I just saw her again. It's been two years now uh, and she's still doing really well. Her prolapse is really minimal. She doesn't feel it. It doesn't impact her life. Uh, and the other one was very similar. Uh, we saw her at the end of the first year. And I also told her she didn't have to wear her pessary full time anymore either, because I think it did allow both of them, their tissues to yeah. shorten in a good position. And uh, so I would love to be able to do some long-term mm -hmm. studies on could we use pessaries that way? Mm -hmm. And if so, that to me would be the most amazing oh, use of a pessary. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, and I agree that prolapse can be scary, but um, I wish it wouldn't be, you know? Um, yeah. So if I we can help in that. Exactly. Or if you can take away some of those symptoms for part or all of the day, it just yes. it's not so all consuming, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much, Trish. I really, really appreciate this. And um, I will definitely, I'll let you know when I have this all ready and posted. And, and Perfect. Um, I hope that it serves as a resource that you're able to use as well. Um, and I hope we cross paths one day. No, that would be awesome. Okay. Thank you for asking okay. me to come on today. It was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.